So last week, um, I introduced the concept of the inner game versus the outer game, right? The outer game is everything that we understand about really business or the world at the moment anyway. So that's things like resources and time and humans and people, you know, the very environment that you operate in as a business. It's your strategy, it's your results, it's the environment that you as an individual operate within. But then over here, we have the inner game. The inner game is really what controls your behaviours and your behaviours is ultimately what influence the outer game, especially if you're the CEO, especially if you're a leader, your behaviours dictate how your organisation operates. And so mastering the inner game can really give you the edge to making greater improvements in the outer game. So let's talk about that. Back to the inner game again. So the elements that make it up. It starts at the bottom with capabilities, right? The skills that you can or you can't do. I'm not going to talk about that today because, again, you're already at a point in your career where your capabilities are pretty well set. Maybe there's some things you could learn to be better at, like public speaking. But on the whole, your capabilities are a skill set that's already there from the experience that you have, right? Maybe you're great at profit and loss, spreadsheets, product, whatever it is, capabilities are already in the bag. Next one up, then, I want to talk about values, right? And values are elements and things related to, I suppose, you as a human. These are things like all humans are equal. Or maybe perhaps yours says my tribe is the best tribe. Okay. Values are other things like I give people the benefit of the doubt. My values are that I'm inherently sceptical of people. I'm inherently sceptical of numbers. Um, work hard, play hard. I don't judge people. Right. And I don't judge these beliefs, me as a human being. One of my values is I'm not judgmental in this. Whatever your values are, they tend to come from your folks, your parents, your upbringing. Those are your values which are set as part of you. Next layer up, then we have beliefs and beliefs are the things that you have learnt to be true in your life. Right. The things you really believe about yourself and you believe about the world. Right. Working long hours equals success, a.k.a. the hustle. Okay. I can do things pretty much better than anyone else can. Right. I'm great at everything. Everybody else. Well, they're not quite as good as me. Being an expert is what is my superpower. I'm an expert in sales, go to market, product, technology, whatever that might be. I'm an expert that has driven me and gives me success in the world that I'm in right now. Another belief might be I can, when I sell my company, I can finally relax. Um, I can coach anybody to be great. It's all about the numbers. No, it's all about the team. These are all beliefs that you've learned throughout your career, throughout your life, that reflect and help to define really the next layer up, which is your identity. And your identity is wrapped up in these beliefs and these values and these capabilities. Right? I can work long hours. I can work really hard. I'm amazing. I'm much better at anybody else than anything else. I'm a one man, one woman machine. I can get loads done. Right. That is your identity. You're a hustler. Right. It's wrapped up within that. Maybe you're inherently you see yourself as a, as a people person. I can coach anybody to be amazing at what they do. Right? I can give visionary speeches and visionary talks and people will follow and do what I do. I'm, I'm great at dealing and working and understanding people. Right. Identity about yourself is you're a great leader in that respect. And these are all fantastic places to be. And the challenge only really comes when something comes along and really Quite makes you question the elements of your identity, your beliefs or your values, your beliefs most certainly, right? Well, you're working, maybe working really, really hard and you're not having a dramatic effect on the bottom line of the business or your business is growing really, really quickly and you're assuming the harder you work, the faster that business will grow. There's going to be a certain point when that isn't that strategy is not going to work anymore. And that can show itself in two ways. One of them being you, you know, you freak out and you do more of it and you get more angry. You know, you emotions start to build. It can be quite frustrating for you. Equally, maybe you see yourself as a fantastic people person, right? And when one of your team fails, you take that personally. You see that as a failure in yourself. Maybe somebody doesn't work out. You blame yourself for that. You see yourself as a failure. Emotion comes from that. It comes up and bubbles to the surface. Maybe you get angry. Maybe you get upset. Whatever it is, emotion comes. And so you can see when things start to make you question you're in a game, that's when you can have a bit of a wobble and emotion can come out and things can go wrong for you. And the reality of what I do as a coach and what I work with the CEOs is I lift the lid on these things and have a look inside. Because the reality is, with both beliefs and values, they are made up of your past. They are backwards looking things. And for you to be more successful right now, you need to look to the future. You can't be looking back 
all of the time. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of this stuff can stand you in good stead to get you forward, but the only really way you're going to dramatically make a change in the business or in your life is by questioning your identity, your values, your beliefs, perhaps your capabilities as well. How do you do that then? Well, we take the lid off. We investigate, where do these come from? Where has that belief come from that working long hours equals success? Where has the belief come from that everybody being in the office five days a week is where success comes from or where serendipity and innovation comes from everybody being in the same room? Where does that belief come from that anybody is coachable, that any human can succeed given the right resources and the right amount of time? Now, I'm not questioning if these are right or wrong. I'm encouraging you to question if these are right or wrong. Where they've come from, what makes you believe that? What other beliefs are possible? What other ways could you be? And really looking at transformation as a leader comes when you question these beliefs and these values. Are they in service of you? Are they making you happy? Are they the right beliefs for your organisation? Are they what you need to get through this particular situation right now? And you see very stark places where this happens in the world, where, where certain individuals, certain leaders have quite public breakdowns, right? This is, includes people like Will Smith giving a slap to um, that guy at the Oscars. This can be Elon Musk having quite a public collapse. This can be Matt Mullenweg picking a fight with the opposition. These are all points where the inner game has gone wrong somewhere, where their very identity is being questioned by outside forces and they are reacting in a different way. They're not acting, they're reacting. And the reality is, is they need to take a, a look at well, what is the inner game they're playing? Is it in service of them? Change those behaviours so they can change the outside world that's there around them. Because in essence, a lot of the strategies they're already using aren't working for them. It's not a simple thing playing and changing and mastering in a game. It takes time. And the first step on that journey is just understanding what's going on. So here's some homework for you that I'd love you to give me some feedback on. Where is the inner game in service of you? Where is it really helping you? Where are your beliefs and values pushing you in the right direction? Where are they holding back? Where are your beliefs and values in conflict with your identity and how are you reacting to that? And what situations does that arise? Look for it. Take a step back, look at yourself in those situations, because mastery only comes when you see these behaviours in yourself. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye bye.